Hello friends and welcome back to this course titled as Introduction to Indian Writing in English. Friends, in unit 11, we started a very important award-winning text, The Inheritance of Loss by Kiran Desai. We initiated our discussion by discussing the plot. After that, we discussed the characterization in the text. Now, we are moving towards unit 12 of the syllabus. Now, in unit 12, we will begin our discussion by talking about the themes which are visible in this work, The Inheritance of Loss. So, you should know that what are you going to learn after the completion of this lecture. So, the lecture outcome will be that you would be able to compare the thematic contexts with the content. So, what are the themes? What is the context behind those themes? And how those themes are related to the content? So, the relation between the context and the content will be visible in this lecture. The first theme which we have to discuss in this text is coming of age growing pains. So friends, coming of age growing pains as it is clear from the title that when your age is appearing, when you are moving towards something in the different stages of your age, how the pain is growing. So, does it mean that if you had more experience in life, then you are in a more traumatic condition, more painful condition or it means something else? Let us explore with the help of these points. The theme of growing pains involves several of the novel's major characters. So, well, this theme, friends, applies not only to, let's say, one character or two characters, but several characters in this story. First, Sai and Gyan undergo a maturation process as their romance encounters obstacles and misunderstandings, Kiran Desai portrays the young people tenderly and realistically. So friends, this is about the relationship between Sai and Gyan. I told you that Gyan is the tutor of Sai and Sai was a schoolgirl. So their relation must be of teacher and student, but they became passionate in love towards each other. So, that romantic encounter which happened between both these characters created lot of obstacles and lot of misunderstandings which are generally, let us say, occurring in the young minds, immature minds, the people who are not adults, the people who do not have, let us say, a mentality through which they can understand the depthness and seriousness of relationships. Sai, for example, becomes curious about the romantic lives of older people, especially her grandfather, as she tries to understand her own situation. So friends, there is one example which we had already discussed in the last class that the, uh, let us say, Sai asks the cook about the relationship between her grandmother and grandfather. Why? Because she herself was involved in the romantic relationship with Gyan. So, she wanted to know that the judge and his wife had what kind of relationships with each other. Gyan in turn feels perplexed and conflicted 
once the initial excitement and mystery of romance has worn off. So, when we talk about the character Gyan, we saw that Gyan is a character who is initially, let us say, interested towards Sai, but when he involved too much into this love relationship, he had, let us say, a guilt consciousness, let us say, the loss of excitement which created in his mind, and he again came back towards the real life, the practical life and then attracted towards the ideas of revolution presented in the group of GNLF. In particular, his love for Sai collides with his wish for manhood and a tough image as a Gorkhaland military partition. So, now if we try to analyze that why Gyan was attracted towards Sai. Maybe that Gyan wanted to prove his manhood, his tough image and then when he left Sai and involved himself into Gorkhaland military, uh, let us say movement, he wanted to prove that he is even much tougher, he is even much tough. He want to let us say prove that he is above, let us say these passions these love etc are trivial things for him and now he is thinking about his nation as a patriot. For some time, Sai and Gyan struggle with feelings of regret, shame and anger. So, friends, there are various incidents where we saw that there is regret, there is shame, there is anger in the relationship between Sai and Gyan, suggesting that their minds are not matured. They were not capable enough to, to bear the seriousness of this relationship. Both of them were young. Sai was just 16 years old and Gyan was just 20 years old. Another character who must confront growing pains is Biju, the cook's son. So, after talking about Sai and Gyan, now we are moving to the story of Biju. And how this cook's son, this Biju, has felt the kind of, let us say, pain, trauma into his, let us say, various stages of life. He is barely 20 when his journey to America and gets low level jobs in restaurant. So, we see that Biju's age and Gyan's age was same. Biju, when 20 years old, moved to America. So, he was also very young, he had his own ambitions and aspirations. So, he do not have let us say much exposure to think and to critically analyze what is going on with him. It is a brutal life with scarcely adequate living conditions, meager pay and insults streaming from racial and ethnic discrimination. So, Biju learnt few things when he went to America. He was an innocent guy. He wanted to work hard. He wanted to earn money. But the kind of racial and ethnic discrimination which he faced in America made his mind of a matured person. Somehow, Biju survives several years of this routine. As time goes on, however, his instincts led him to return to his homeland and the description of that return leaves no doubt he has made the right decision. So, when Biju decides that he will leave America now and he will go back to India, his decision was appropriate because the kind of racial and ethnic discrimination he faced, there was no emotional attachment of any person in America with him. So, nobody was there to care for him. And care and affection is something which everyone wants. So, Biju made a right decision of moving back to India. Whatever circumstances may come in India, whatever he is going to, let us say, face, the money problems or, let us say, taking care of his father, etc. But there is his father who is going to take care of Biju and Biju will take care of his father. Although Judge Patel is elderly, 
During the novel's main setting, numerous flashbacks focus on his youth as a student in England. So, now when we move from the character of Biju to the judge, we see that judge has also faced this kind of, uh, let's say, trauma, this kind of uh, tension into his life. He was tortured when he went to England to study at Cambridge. And we came to know about all these things with the flashback. I told you earlier also, flashback means the story is running in the present and a character thinks about his or her past, goes back to the past and then some incidents related to the past starts happening in the story. So that is known as flashback. The judge adopts a pro-British posture despite being snubbed and rejected on numerous occasions because of his Indian origin. Judge Patel grows as it were in reverse. So friends, there was a complete let's say reverse progress which happened in the condition of Judge Patel. Judge was a good hearted person, an innocent person, an intelligent person when he was in India. But when he went to study in Cambridge, his personality completely changed from innocence to brutality, from positivity to negativity. So, rather than hating British people because they are ignoring him and they are treating him with racial discrimination, he started behaving like British people. So, with this example, we can understand that a person who is exploited takes the role of the exploiter. The more oppressive his situation becomes, the more he digs in his heels and finds refuge in bitterness. So, he was an oppressed person. He was a, let us say, humiliated person. And to get relief from his, let us say, humiliation and frustration, he used to oppress others. So, the oppressed becomes the oppressor and in this process, the oppressor, let us say, received a kind of satisfaction. We had seen in the story that the judge used to, let us say, beat his wife and then he beat the cook also. So, this kind of behavior suggests that there is a fullness of bitterness which is visible in the attitude of this judge. The judge's storyline in particular traces the author's overall argument about the limits of Anglophilia. So, there are limits of Anglophilia and all these arguments related to Anglophilia, they are visible in the personality or the storyline of judge. Whenever there is some reference of judge, we can feel that there is some mental disbalance which occurred in the behavior of judge after coming from Cambridge. His failure in respect to his love of English culture reflects the larger failure of India, who welcomed the British through trade policies, but achieved none of the outcomes of Indian people desired by falling in love with their oppressors. So friends, Judge need to be seen in a larger picture. When we see judge, we see the Indian people, common Indian people. When Indians invited Britishers for trade in India, they were very much inspired by the British manners and British gentlemanly behavior. But then what happened? Britishers started oppressing and exploiting Indians. And rather than criticizing Britishers, Rather than, let us say, uh, creating a revolution against Britishers, there were many Indians who started behaving like Britishers, who started being discrimination with the other lower caste Indians. When put in contrast with Sai and Biju, the novel develops a space when the reader can think about the future of India as young people and in many ways, the country itself struggle to come of age in the wake of imperialism. So friends, we can understand from this, from this text that 
if we put a contrast on Sai and Biju. Now Biju lived in America, Sai lived in India. We can see that and all the readers can also think that India future lies in young people. And in many ways, struggle to come of age in the wake of imperialism can only be done, let us say, through these young people. Sai, although living in India, had British manners. Biju lived in America, was a true Indian. He wanted to come back to India and finally he came back. So with this, we can understand that the characters like Sai, Biju, Judge or Gyan, they are suggesting a kind of, let us say, complexity of mind. They are the youth of India. India needed them to fight against the Britishers. And in this way, this novel is, uh, let us say, at a different position. The next theme, which is visible in this novel is displacement and alienation. Displacement and alienation are part of almost every leading character's experience in the novel. The inheritance of loss is a tale poised between India and the West. Friends, we see that in this story, many characters are displaced. Displacement means the characters are thrown from one place to another place. And due to which alienation happens in their life. Alienation means they feel isolated, they feel alone, they feel that there is nobody to share their feelings. So, this kind of alienation and displacement is clearly visible in the, let us say, behavior of many characters. The widespread urge to flee India for greener pastures is evident in the numerous petitions that the cook, Biju's father, forwards to his son for aid in the immigration process. So, friends, there are many references in the novel where you see that Cook expected his son to go abroad because the future in abroad is bright than India. And there are various justifications which Cook, who is Biju's father, gives to his son because he was dissatisfied. He for, uh, he thought that he is unsuccessful because he stayed back in India. The plight of immigrants in their unceasing efforts to legalize their status in the United States by getting a green card is repeatedly emphasized in the story. Friends, there are many references of immigrants, illegal immigrants, who want to get the green card of America, who think that if they get the green card, their life will, will become successful. So all these, let us say, uh, steps, all these efforts to legalize their entry into the European world is something which is evidently visible in many scenes of this story. Yet it is clear that life is an immigrant has its own significant strains. But friends, we had also observed in this story that immigrants, they had their own problems. They are living in a completely alien world and thus all the time they are struggling and their mind becomes complex. Biju is not described as especially nostalgic, but even he ready as he is to tolerate countless prejudices and harsh conditions grows restless and finally returns to India. So friends, this is the biggest problem with the immigrants, that they feel restless, they feel alienated, they feel traumatic and same happens with Biju. And Biju, because of all these factors clubbed together, started feeling nostalgic. Nostalgic means the character starts remembering about his or her past, thinking about the glorious past days and all these things clubbed together forced Biju to return back to India, leaving all the, let us say, countless prejudices and harsh conditions which he faced while his stay in America. On the other hand, the case of Judge Patel is different. 
He feels displaced as a student in England, but he welcomes the opportunity to join the ranks of British overlords of India. Friends, if we consider the character of Biju with the character of Judge, we feel that Judge also went abroad, Biju also went abroad. But this, this kind of, uh, let's say, racial discrimination which Judge has faced changed the personality of Judge but not Biju. Judge was an intelligent person, a well-educated person. On the other hand, Biju was not very educated. He was somehow similar to a semi-literate. But <clears throat> Biju was able to hold his behavior. Biju was able to keep the innocence and chastity into his personality. But judge was not able to do that. So it creates, let's say, a question into the minds of the readers that what is the worth of education then if you are not able to decide what is wrong and what is uh, right. If you are not judgmental in the things, if you do not understand that what is, let's say, best for you, what is most appropriate for you, then there is no sense of getting lot and lot of education. Biju, when comes back from America, proves to be a better personality than judge when judge comes back from England. When he is rejected in the end by this establishment, his displacement assumes a different form. He feels alienated in his own country. So, friends, Biju, when came back to India, his alienation went away when he met his father. But in the case of judge, judge is still alienated. Judge is still isolated. He is still in the pathetic condition like he used to be in England and thus the alienation, the rootlessness which appeared in the behavior of judge did not last long. He, it remained in his behavior even after coming back to India. Sai is also subject to displacement and alienation. Orphaned at young age, she is shuttled by fate to live with her stern grandfather. Now, coming from uh, uh, other characters to Sai, we see that Sai is also, let's say, displaced and alienated. Why? Because she became orphan. Her mother and father went to, uh, to take her admission into a very good institution. But they died in an accident and Sai was somehow, let's say, had to migrate to her stern grandfather. The grandfather who was not very caring or emotional. The romance with Gyan kindles her imagination for a while, but she realizes she must leave Cho Oyu before too much time passes. So friends, when we talk about the, let's say, uh, the romance of Gyan and Sai, we see that there is some kind of dissatisfaction in the mind of Sai. Sai needed that affection and love which she expected from her grandfather she missed her parents and which is why she engaged in relationship with Gyan. She wanted to leave Cho Oyu. She wanted to create her own world. She wanted to marry Gyan and live in a house which she is going to manage with her own, let's say, priorities, which is why she engaged in a relationship with Gyan. Let us move to the third theme that is love and fear. In the inheritance of loss, love is an emotion that entails unanticipated ambiguity. The romance of Sai and Gyan, for example, seems promising at first. So friends, when we in this novel, when we came to know that uh, Sai and Gyan are now in a romantic relationship, we found that the relationship can be positive, can be promising. But later we found that it has 
सम काइंड ऑफ अनएंटिसिपेटेड एम्बिग्यूटी समथिंग विच वॉज नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड बाय बोथ द पार्टीज समथिंग विच हैज चेंज देयर लाइफ एंड विच हैज मेक देयर लाइफ रूइंड हाउ एवर बोथ कैरेक्टर्स एक्सपीरियंस मिस गिविंग्स स्पेशली ज्ञान हु फील्स हिज डेस्टिनी एज अ मैन इज सम हाउ इम्पेरिल्ड बाय हिज फीलिंग्स फॉर साइन सो फ्रेंड्स If we take about the let's say uh, character Gyan, we see that Gyan is a mixture of this theme of love and fear. He started loving uh, Sai, but later he found that there is a fearful situation. He wanted to prove others as his men, but in that fear, he started beating Sai. Such reservations lead Gyan to betray Sai. and her household to his fellow militants so when gyan let's say came to see about uh, his the change in his behavior and the change in his relationship he started betraying sign he started ignoring her and in this let's say condition he got attracted towards the fellow militants the militants who are let's say uh, who became a let's say whole of relieving pain for gyan they also hinder a lasting reconciliation of the two after their bitter dispute over running after the west so we can see that in the case of gyan and sai both have a kind of bitter dispute bitter dispute the dispute lies on the practices of the west running after the west this person uh, gyan he expected that sai is mimicking the west sai is let's say behaving like the western people and he was a true indian he disliked that behavior of sai and this reason became uh, uh, let's say this became a reason for the dispute between sai and gyan judge patel is also intimidated by the emotion of love early in the novel as a judge bids farewell to his father in bombay he is described as never again experiencing love without the presence of another contradictory emotion friends when we talk about the case of judge patel he was also in a condition of contradictory love he uh, left his father he let's say Uh, greeted him and then he moved to cambridge that movement suggested a completely or a drastic change in the life of judge now he is not going to feel that kind of experience that kind of love that kind of affection again in his life so his let's say behavior will be now like a person with contradictory nature the judge's brutal treatment of his wife which culminates in abandonment has its roots in his obstinate refusal to surrender his pride and status on behalf of another human being friends just like gyan wanted to prove his manhood over sai which is why he started ignoring sai and joined the gnlf group in the same way judge also wanted to prove his manhood manhood has a kind of pride of unsurrender judge do not want to surrender now in front of anyone in this world be it his wife or his father or his granddaughter or his cook or any other person and in this condition of abandonment he feels alienated he feels let's say cut off from his roots and from every person around him only his acceptance of sai mitigates this dreary and embitterment portrait of judge's character so in this entire world which character is accepted by judge only his granddaughter sai and what is the reason sai had the european manners sai knows how to behave like english people and judge liked it judge 
I told you friends that judge used to beat his wife because the wife was not behaving like European people, like English women. And thus we can see that Sai had all those let's say manners and which is why judge liked her. The next theme is cultural conflict and discrimination. Friends, the cultures are clashing because of immigration because of movement and due to which the characters are facing a kind of discrimination. Somewhere they are facing this discrimination in the other country and in some cases the discrimination is felt in their own country at their native place. The most prominent cultural conflict in the novel is the clash between India and the West. This conflict underlies the experience of Judge Patel in England as well as the dispute between Gyan and Sai. So we had discussed it that the judge faced that discrimination in England and Gyan faced that discrimination in a relationship with Sai. Gyan felt that he is inferior to Sai. Sai is behaving like English women and Gyan is a true Nepali boy. So this kind of inferiority superiority complex created a dispute in their relationship. But conflict is also common within India itself. Lola's and Noni's prejudices against the Nepalis, the rebellion of the GNLF against the prevailing authority of Bengalis in the region of Kalimpong and Darjeeling and the division of caste or inherited social groupings that mark the judge's career in India. So friends, we see that the cultural conflict was not only visible between India and West but it was also visible in the context of India also. Lola and Noni, they used to believe that Bengalis are superior to Nepalis in that area of Kalimpong. But the people who were associated with GNLF, they thought that Nepalis need some kind of rights because Bengalis have captured the complete economy and the complete, let's say, social ways of upliftment in that area Kalimpong and Darjeeling. So we can see that in India itself the society was div divided into regionalism and casteism. So and then we found that there is also division of caste and there are various kind of social groupings which are visible in the context of India. In Britain and the United States, discrimination against Indians is especially striking. So friends, when we uh, read this story, we found that there is a discrimination which is happening in Britain and United States because we used to consider that these are developing, de these are developed nations. So there must be a very healthy environment of progress. But on the other hand, we see that there are people there in those, let's say, places who are rigid, the native British and United States people, they are let's say adamant and had a superiority complex. The judge for example, finds it difficult to find a rented room when he arrives in Cambridge as a student. So the first experience friends, which judge has faced while his stay in Cambridge is that he didn't get a rented room because he was an Indian, nobody wanted to give him a room in let's say the area of Cambridge. In New York, many years later, Biju is also the victim of discrimination. So friends, we saw that when Biju went to America, after many years, judge went to England. Biju also faced the similar kind of discrimination. So has the condition, let's say, uh, improved with the, let's say, change of years? It is not the case. Judge went to England many years back. Biju went to America many years after, but even then both faced the, let's say, racial discrimination, both faced alienation, both faced, uh, let's say, ki ki kind of uh, avoidance from the natives of those places. So friends, on the basis of these themes, we can understand the depth of this text, the inheritance of loss. It has covered many issues which are 
which makes this text global. It has a universal approach because of the issues like immigration, alienation, rootlessness, racial discrimination and movement from one country to another country and the interrelationship between two people. It has also covered the issues of differences in the Indian society and the dissatisfaction of one group of Indians from another group of Indians. So on the basis of all these aspects we can say that this text inheritance of laws is a let's say seminal text in its spirit and thus was let's say thus was able to win the award for its let's say publication. That is all for today. Thank you for listening.